Good afternoon and welcome to the program Midday Discourse on Global Television, where we discuss very salient issues in Nigeria's sphere of a national life. On today's edition, we're still focusing on the big issue concerning Nigeria's economic uh, environment, where the issue of inflation is still hitting hard. 28.20% uh, is what the inflation rate is hitting right now, which makes it very, very difficult for Nigerians in terms of purchasing power and the consumer price index also uh, not any more friendly uh, to the Nigerian populace. And uh, yesterday in our discourse on midday, uh, we had uh, a guest Onye Kule, who told us, an economist, uh, analyst, who told us that agriculture is one sure way of uh, helping Nigeria out of the, the mess we are in, in terms of uh, the issue of uh, the ever-increasing inflation. And so on that premise, we decided to get uh, someone who is in that sector, the agricultural sector, in the person of Benjamin Aduli, uh, to help us look at the issue as regards how agriculture uh, can thrive in at this very crucial moment so that Nigeria could uh, get out of uh, the quagmire uh, she has found herself. He is uh, the vice president of uh, the African operations of the Mills Trading Limited, and uh, he will be offering us expert advice uh, and insight towards what Nigeria can and do using agriculture to fight the inflation we are facing currently. Uh, he'll be joining us via Zoom. Uh, he's uh, based in Lagos. Uh, uh, let's uh, get our guest uh, on. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Benjamin Aduli. Good afternoon, sir. All right, nice to have you join us live, uh, and uh, we're so happy to have you here doing fully well that uh, you might just be the answer to the, the trouble facing Nigeria in terms of the ever-increasing infla inflation uh, statistics, 28.20%. And uh, uh, yesterday we did talk with an economic uh, expert who told us that agriculture was one of the sure ways Nigeria can get away from what it's facing. Uh, just give us a clear background how effective and how important agriculture is uh, to the economy of any nation? Well, agriculture is the, the bedrock of um, this any serious nation. Food security is, is actually very important to any serious nation. So uh, however your, your people are secured, they must feed. So when you now have 220 million people to feed, you know, therefore, that there's problem when there's hunger. So food security is a very critical part of the security architecture of any serious nation. All right, uh, uh, let's look at, uh, for agriculture, looking at how important it is, uh, has the inflation surging rate, has it affected the agricultural sector also? And um, for big players like you in the agricultural sector, what has been uh, the backlash from this high inflation rate? Well, for us, it has helped us to invest uh, massively in production. Uh, we we have been take, doing lip service as a nation to agricultural production. But with inflation as high it is now, uh, coupled with the higher exchange rates, uh, coupled with the fact that we are an import-dependent nation, so the truth really is we don't really have a choice now than to go into real massive production and we as a company has taken that as a challenge and we're investing massively in rice production because we believe that nigeria can be self-sustaining in rice production um we are currently investing massively in rising rice farming in 12 states and we are farming over 155,000 hectares of rice so if we produce a rice then the inflation becomes a good news for us because we can sell a very good price and our farmers can feed themselves and can feed others. So for us, therefore, uh, the inflation might just be the uh, the aperture we need to shock us into reality and force us back to the farm. Okay, in terms of uh, going back to farms and uh, farming in 12 states, which is massive, uh, we know the issue of insecurity, how it has also affected a business. How has it affected the agricultural uh, sector, knowing that uh, farmers are also very apprehensive going back to the farms due to the insecurity? Well, we are about to also invest in security because for all the farm, the farm estates are 
our, our assets. So if, if a bank can afford to secure his branch bank because he has money there, we also can afford to uh, secure our land because we have assets there. So we're working with the NCDC, we're working with Nigerian police to come up with a security architecture that can protect our farmers. Okay, uh, looking at the investment, uh, uh, how would you judge uh, the investment? Which sectors? And uh, has, has it, have you had cooperation from the Nigerian government? Uh, because we, uh, recently we had the president, uh, Bola Tinubu, uh, raise the issue of uh, food insecurity, the need for food security for the country. Uh, has that meant that you've gotten more support from the government of the day? So far, it, it is still, the government is still trying to define uh, what exactly they want to do about the food security. I think it's just a pronouncement yet, but the pronouncement has uh, galvanized a lot of international interest. Uh, we have some people that we have been talking to for the past four years who hasn't listened to us, come back to us now and said, okay, uh, maybe your government is ready now. What do we can we do to help? So uh, the, from a policy perspective, I think the policies have been good. The government appears to be clear what they want to do, but the operational side of actually having uh, the food soldiers on the ground, having the boat on the ground, um, it is still in, in the planning phase. So, but I think the declaration on the food security is, is the right direction. It does give the, the, the president and his team the power to do what they need to do. Now, whether they would translate that power into reality by mobilizing foods on the ground, and getting the uh, the farmers to really see that in action is something we we still need to wait and see. But I think the policy on the policy direction, I think it's a very a very good policy. Okay, uh, I I know you're a financial advisor to the African Capital and Business Support Limited. Uh, can you tell us how much this uh, this roles you play and uh, how much uh, you know support you also do get from outside investment and how key it is. Uh, for us to be able to uh, break even? Well, we, we, we are blessed as a nation. We have the right land. We have the people. We have the youths. We are among the few countries in the world where our average age for our young ones are less than 30. So we have every indices actually to be a, a very, very successful agrarian nation. Uh, so we we saw that over 10 years ago. So we started building an, an agricultural ecosystem as a company. We provide three basic support for our farmers, which is access to capital, access to market, and access to technology. So using the different technologies that we have and different funding partners we have, we have put together a specialized agricultural fund which will be hitting the capital market in the next few weeks where we're raising over two billion dollars in uh, agricultural bond that will be listed both in nigeria and the capital market offshore uh, this is going to create a single digit interest rate funding for our farmers providing them long patient capital for the farmers and also providing financing for some infrastructure that our farmers need to be able to farm successfully. Um, through uh, one of our subsidiaries called Mechanized Agricultural Investment and Services, we are investing massively into tractor deployment. We are importing over 5,000 tractors, and we're working with Hello Tractor in Nigeria to deploy these tractors across over 24 states. Uh, so, we are definitely uh, aggressively providing the infrastructure for our farmers to be able to turn from subsistence farming to mechanized farming and commercial farming. At the moment, we have a database of over 3 million farmers spread across 26 states, and we are farming um, these produce that are 70% consumed in Nigeria, about 30% exported. So for us, therefore, declaring the food security by the nation by the by the president was a good development because it brings everything we have worked in the past 18 years into four and provide us with the uh, visibility to actually mobilize a lot a lot more farmers into our ecosystem 
Okay, uh, you, you talked about three key things, uh, talking about uh, access to the market, access to capital, and access to technology. Uh, uh, in terms of access to the market, then uh, capital, uh, which are very key, uh, which of these three uh, has the Nigerian farmers, uh, you know, um, embraced more? And have you been able to get uh, a return for the investment in terms of access to market and uh, uh, capital. Uh, are Nigerian banks willing to support uh, this push? Uh, let me speak specifically to each of these uh, solution platform. First okay. is access to market. In the last two to three years now, about three to, to four different uh, commodity exchanges have become operational in Nigeria. The Lagos Commodities and Futures Exchange the Afex Commodities Exchange in Abuja, uh, the Voron Corolli Marketplace, uh, and the NGF Commodities Exchange. These four markets have provided exit market for many crops that we are farming. So we don't really need to look for each individual crop uh, off taker. We can off take them to the Commodities Exchange, and then that gives us access to market. Now, because of the unique nature of these crops, it's possible to then create a bond in the market, which means that when these crops are still in the capital market, you can monetize them or tokenize them and put them in the capital market. Um, the blockchain technology is also proven very helpful. So we're working with Roadnet based in Geneva to tokenize this product, convert them into tokens and sell them to any global investor who wants to invest. Um, however, there is um, a very weak leg in the market is the insurance market. The Nigerian insurance market is not very really developed, so we are working with some global insurance company to develop some unique insurance product for the Nigerian market as well. Uh, we are working with a group in the US called Global Green, where we are launching um, a food, an African food sovereignty program on the first week of March in Abuja, where we are targeting to get. 12 million Nigerian farmers to empower them using the, this, plat this platform. So from that funding perspective and access to capital perspective, we've got the products that we need to take, to take these people out of uh, subsistence farming. On the technology side, we've got some very fantastic technology. We've got uh, satellite technology. We've got um, um, organic uh, fertilizer technology that are based on animal dogs that can improve the yield of, of uh, farmers tremendously. Let me give you a typical example. Uh, in Nigeria, your average yield per hectare for rice is about 3.4 to 4.5 uh, ton per hectare. But in Thailand, it's 8 to 8.5 tons per hectare. What does that mean? It means an average Thailand farmer, therefore, is more productive, can sell cheaper, because it produces more per hectare than we do. Why do we produce 3.4 to 4, hect 4, hectares, uh, 4 tons per hectare? Why someone else in Thailand is doing 7.5 to 8 tons per hectare? It's simply technology. So once we train our farmers, provide them with the incentive, provide them with the technology, they can improve their farming because once the yield increases, the profit increases, then the EOP economic production increases. You can then afford to compete globally in your pricing because now you can compete in your production system. So you can take one and leave the other. So for us, therefore, it is an entire ecosystem. You can't do it piecemeal. It's not going to work. You must take the entire ecosystem and dissect it and provide solutions one after the other. Unfortunately, our banking system are myopic. They are they are not an, uh, ready for the entire ecosystem. But gradually, we will get the the products are coming up in the market now. So with with the, the scale that we are seeing these things happening now, and with the government taking our culture once again seriously, I think the banks will wake up and begin to look for products that can suit the market and begin to come back to the market. By the moment. Uh, over seventy percent of our funding is not from the country; it's from offshore. Uh, local banks are only interested in the trading component of that cultural ecosystem. But I think that uh, with the level of inflation and the level of uh, activities we are seeing in that sector, banks will wake up and begin to get into the real sector itself and begin to look at how they can provide some medium to long-term funding for that cultural sector.
Okay, uh, looking at uh, the workforce uh, which you employ to get this uh, job done, uh, is there any form of transfer of technology uh, for Nigerian uh, farmers and also uh, uh, those working directly with you so that uh, Nigerians can get this hang of how this technology, this model of progress is being, you know, implemented to, to get the very best and do you intend to impart it on uh, Nigerian farmers and also entrepreneurs who are interested in the agricultural sector as a way of uh, helping Nigeria expand its uh, potentials in the agricultural uh, uh, you know, sector? Yes, but technology transfer is part of our, our framework from day one. We we form all our farmers into cooperative clusters, and then we provide the inputs uh, from the technology part point of view. So, and we also train our farmers uh, to to begin to uh, imbibe some technology cultures. So, ultimately, um, our, our technology partners are designed to exit after three to five years. But within that three to five years, we would have trained some local capacity. To take over from where they stop, yeah. so we are training our youths massively in in technology. We are training our youths in agriculture economics, and we are training our youths in agricultural uh, t different agripreneur technologies as well. So uh, capacity building is the core component of what we are doing. Um, we also are growing a new generation of agricultural entrepreneurs who see agriculture as a business, not just agriculture as an aid or as a support. No, we are interested in our young farmers becoming really uh, development farmers uh, or competent um, global entrepreneurs who can grow and compete with their peers all over the world. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, the inflation proper now. Uh, how do you think uh, all this uh, milestone that has been achieved in terms of especially uh, access to market, how can uh, we use that to turn around the inflation uh, trend in Nigeria? And uh, what part other state and non-state actors would you be calling f as, a, as a way of support to ensure that maize uh, trading limit, limited and other you know, uh, you know, stakeholders can, you know, contribute their quota towards Nigeria's GDP? We, uh, our ultimate goal is to get every farmer on our network to, to produce at least a continual load of farm produce in a year. Now, if we get 12 million farmers to produce one container each, that's 12 million containers of different grains that we can grow. This could be rice, this could be maize, this could be soya gum, this could be soya beans. That's, that's, that's the foundation. Now, once you produce these things, you then now have to go into processing and adding value. And for processing and adding value to work, other infrastructure are critical. Power must be there. Tilling power must be there. Many factories must be there. Uh, once you begin to add value, that's when you begin to make money. You can make money from uh, primary produce. But if you don't have enough supplies to feed the market, you really can't make any, any, any impact. Take rice, for example. Uh, from the time that the last administration banned the production of rice, uh, by our count, there are over 122 different rice mills in Nigeria. But the big question is, where is the paddy rice that they will process? So if you just go ahead and keep on setting up rice processing factory, without looking at the back integration of planting the rice and producing the rice itself, you, you are going to have rice meat that are lying everywhere with no rice to process. So in addition, therefore, to investing in rice meals, we need to invest in rice farming itself. We need to invest in both off-season and off-season, rice farming and rice season and wet season, all of these are within the ecosystem that we ensure that Nigeria ultimately now moves on to rice sustenance as a country. Um, the likes of Dangote Boa started that with, with cement. Today, Nigeria is a net exporter of cement as against importation. We can do that in rice, we can do that in maize, we can do that in in cocoa, we can do that in granite, we can do that in, in soya beans. So 
once you achieve all of this, we then begin to reduce importation because then we become a net exporter of many of these products as against being a net importer that we are. And once you do that, the pressure on the Naira goes down and then prices can begin to stabilize and that's how we, can, we are going to solve this problem. So, um, yes, our road infrastructure is important. Our power is, is, is important. Our manpower, our skill manpower is important. And then, once all of these factors come together holistically, uh, the economy will feel the impact more. Right. Uh, st st still talking about the inflation rate, we know in food, uh, currently Nigeria has a 32.8% uh, uh, in terms of the inflation rate uh, when it has to do with food. And in comparison to other countries, we have Egypt currently has an inflation rate of 34.6%. Uh, Ghana has 26.4%. We've got Kenya with 6.8%. Uh, Nigeria, 28.2%. Why South Africa has 5.5%. Percent uh, inflation rate. Uh, looking at these countries mentioned, Egypt, which has the highest of 34.6, Ghana, close to us here, 26.4, Kenya, 6.8 percent, and South Africa, 5.5 percent. Uh, which of these countries would make more trading sense uh, for Nigeria, especially when it has to do with agriculture? And, and for you, uh, do you have any lineage with any of these countries mentioned? Um, first, the this had to be looked at within the uh, the AFTA agreement, which is the African Trade Trade Opportunity, where Africans are supposed to trade with themselves. Okay. So um, we we need to begin to be producing not just for Nigeria but for African market because even if we don't export to Europe, we we can export to African countries where the uh, quality control is much more closer. Uh, and then um, uh, it's less strange, strange than to us. Uh, so for us as a group, we are focusing on feeding Africa. That's our core focus. Um, so we presently have operations in Ghana and in South Africa. Um, but th those are trade outlets for now. What we are focusing on is what are items that we can export from Nigeria to Ghana, from Nigeria to South Africa, and from Nigeria to Morocco. These are the four countries we are focused on now. And the indices we are getting is quite interesting. The market is getting bigger and bigger by the day. Uh, the biggest challenge, though, is the logistics of moving goods within Africa. Uh, Africa is 54 small countries. You have to uh, look at visa issues, uh, passport issues, movement is not easy. But um, as the continent begins to implement the um, African growth, uh, the free continental zone agreement, we expect that these barriers will come down and then um, inter-African trade will improve and then it becomes easier for us to move uh, goods from place to place within Africa. Uh, then trade will improve. But at the moment, uh, African trade with African countries are still very low. But I think that we can improve on it as the implementation of the African Trade Free Trade Agreement improves. Um, so for us, therefore, our focus for now is first, let's improve our production capacity in Nigeria. Let's take advantage of our youths. Let's take advantage of our land. Let's take advantage of our weather condition. These are all unique situations that we will find in Nigeria, which gives us ability to actually produce massively, especially in these agrarian crops in Nigeria. That once we have surplus, then uh, adding value becomes the next uh, uh, vertical thing to do. And then we can then look at other export opportunities within the African continent. Okay, I'm, I mean, I'm still interested uh, when you talked about uh, movement of goods and services within the African region. Are, are you saying the ECOWAS uh, treaties uh, that had been entered and other blocks uh, within the African continent has not been uh, forthcoming? Are you saying they're just slip service? They've, they've not been practical? Um, so, um, so, um, so they are on paper. They are not on ground. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> These treaties are, are on paper. First of all, Many African countries still feel threatened when it comes to uh, custom regulations. Uh, even within West Africa, the custom regulations are not all uh, united. They are all still protecting themselves and protecting their own small economy. 
Okay, let me give an example. Do you know it is it is so expensive to move goods from Nigeria to Kotonou to Ghana? Because every of those borders are still as chained as, as if you are going from one continent to another. So all the treaties, they are policies on paper. To actually implement them requires some bold initiatives. It requires uh, Africans seeing the bigger picture. As it is now, we are still seeing a small picture. Each of the custom unions are trying to protect its own small countries because they are feeding from it. They are making money from charging every, every goods that comes in. But by the time we begin to see ourselves as a, a continent that should take care of our continental interests before our local sovereignty interests, then all well, these barriers will begin to break down. But as it is today, it's still a, a, a long way to go. All right. Uh, let's uh, take you back to the issue of uh, uh, storage. Uh, you know, you deal, uh, you talked about grains, rice, and other forms of grains. Uh, how has it been in terms of the storage facility in Nigeria? Has it uh, improved over time, especially the fact that we've got issues with our power, uh, you know? Uh, how would you describe it? Is it getting better or is it still at its infant stage? Uh, the, story that, the story capacity of the nation has improved tremendously in the last couple of years with the uh, three to four different commodity exchanges now aggressively building storage centers across the country. Uh, Afrex is building massive storage capacity in several states. Um, the Lagos Commodities and Food Church Exchange also is licensing um, the actual uh, warehouses and inspecting them and getting the Securities and Exchange Commission to certify the exchanges, the, the, the storage centers as well. So compared to what it was five, six, seven years ago, I think it has improved. However, there's a huge gap that needs to be filled. Uh, we need to begin to get more investors to invest in these value chains. Storage capacity is an issue. Uh, the quality of the storage also is an issue. The quality of the conditions of the storage facilities also needs to improve. But by and large, I think the awareness is growing by the day uh, and more investors are taking advantage of, of it. Now, closely related to storage distribution of logistics, it is still dangerously expensive to move goods across Nigeria. Let me share an example with you. Okay. Uh, we have a partner who is um, exporting uh, some kind of grass to UAE from Nigeria. Now, the only way they can break even is to move it by train. If they try to move it by by rail, by by road, they will lose. There is no other option. So, they won't even talk to you if you are going to if your farm is located where there is no access to a railway. Because after crunching the numbers, there is no way they can break even moving this thing by road. So. What that means, therefore, is 70% of the country is cut off because how many cities have access to railway in Nigeria? But that's the reality on ground. To move one trailer load of these items by rail is just about 200 and something thousand. And to move it by road is 1.2 million. Look at the difference. So this ticket alone difference. is taking over 800,000 to 1 million naira per trailer load. So how do you justify that for ever trying to move it by road? Yet, that's what we have in Nigeria. So we need to invest massively in rail infrastructure, connect this rail to our rural farmers where they can be able to use it to transport their goods and services. But at the moment, rail investment is exclusive of government. So there's a little you can do about, about that at the moment. But we're hoping that in the future, uh, maybe this can be privatized where private investors can then begin to invest in them. So it, transport and logistic infrastructure is, is critical for us to begin to be economically competitive. You, you mentioned South Africa. South Africa has massive infrastructure. They have moved from subsistence farming to commercial farming. Most okay, of the farmers are commercial farmers. They are okay, no longer Benjamin, doing we'll... small other farmers are doing it here. That's why the inflation rate is still low. But... Okay, it's, Benjamin, still, it's still not comparable uh, to Nigeria. It's a long way away from. Okay, 
Okay, Benjamin, we'll go for a quick break. And uh, when we come back from the break, the uh, conversation continues. In case you're just joining us, it's a midday discourse on global television. And we'll be speaking with the Vice uh, uh, President of Africa uh, Operations of Mills uh, Trading Limited uh, right there in Lagos, the commercial city of Nigeria. We'll be, we've been talking about how tackling Nigeria's inflation via agriculture. we will be going for a quick break. When we return from the break, the discussion continues. Stay with us. Right, welcome back from the break. We are still on midday discourse uh, where we are discussing something very vital to Nigeria's growth. We're talking about uh, tackling Nigeria's inflation via agriculture. And we've been speaking with the vice president of uh, Mills Trading Limited. Uh, he is uh, the man uh, in charge of uh, the African operations uh, as we look at best ways to go around the uh, ever increasing inflation in Nigeria, which is at 28.2% uh, currently. All right, uh, Benjamin, Aduli, uh, you're still with us, right? Yeah. All right, uh, let's, let's focus uh, now on uh, some of the challenges uh, uh, that uh, you have faced in, in the course of this journey and uh, what it has been, especially looking at our judicial system. Uh, have you got the very best of uh, support in terms of the judiciary when uh, there are disputes when it comes to businesses in terms of uh, the ease of doing business in Nigeria? I was uh, honestly hoping that you were not going to go into the issue of uh, judiciary. Uh, the Nigerian judiciary is still a very, very, um, is, is a, what, what do I use? It's still a jungle, if you ask me, really. The judiciary wow. is still when it comes to business adjudication, okay. the time involved in judiciary adjudicating business dispute is too long, um, and, and that becomes too expensive for a business person. So, because the they know the system knows that yes, you can, because the longer it takes, the more you pay lawyers, the more you pay uh, the different people who are involved. So, it's too expensive basically because of the time involved. So maybe we we'll have to begin to look at having special courts that handle uh, business education issues so that the issues can be expedited. Otherwise, when cases dragged in court for 10 years, uh, cases that could be dispensed within in, uh, in, two, in two years, it becomes more too expensive for uh, the businesses to process, to prosecute. Uh, most cases, uh, the businesses just prefer to abandon the cases or or go for an out of court settlement because you know that 
you can you can use technicalities to drag on the case for as long as you want. And the longer you drag it, the more expensive it become. So I think we need to improve on uh, business dispute resolution and adjudication because they are matters that some require some urgency, but the costs are overloaded, the costs are stressed, the judges are stressed. So adjudication can take uh, for too long. Uh, once you are caught up in the political circle, everything stops until the political system is concluded before judges come back again and say, okay, now what did you stop? So I think there's a lot, there's, there's need for a lot of improvement on, on business adjudication in Nigeria. Okay, uh, moving out from there, uh, let's look into the uh, 2024 budget, uh, which uh, promises uh, uh, a hope uh, for Nigerians and uh, the different uh, sectors of our national life. Uh, for you, are you impressed with uh, the likely allocation uh, of uh, the budgets for the agricultural sector and uh, also uh, how much excitement are the players in the agricultural sector ahead of the 2024? We signed the Maputo Agreement, which which committed us to ten percent of our budget should go to agriculture. But we never met it. We have never in one year met that agreement. Uh, so uh, we are hoping that sometime in the future we can meet up with that commitment, and ten percent of our budget should go to agriculture. Uh, but it, it takes time. It takes convention. It takes political will. I, I had expected that since the, the president has declared a national food emergency, uh, that the budget will, for the first time in history, ten percent of our budget should go to agriculture. But I have not looked at the twenty twenty four budget in details to see. But I don't think ten percent of that is going to go into agriculture. But I think that the good news is there's a lot of private sector interest in agricultural value chain now. So um, I expect that if government can focus more on smart investments, what I mean by smart investments, investments that can catalyze more investment to come in. Um, the new fund that the present, the last administration signed into law has, is already uh, taking shape now. The, the, the executive secretary has been appointed, the chairman has been appointed. So um, overall, there's a lot of more funds availability coming into the agricultural sector, but it's still a far cry from what it should be. It's still a far cry from what it should be. So our fingers are crossed. We are still watching and seeing if the government will match the talk with some work. And if they do, um, we are there to, to meet with them. I, I think uh, the, the future of agriculture in Nigeria is bright. The, the potential is there. Uh, but some of us are just tired of hearing potential, potential. Let's take this thing to reality and then let's feed that people. Okay, uh, still talking on the budget, uh, it's been said that uh, new borrowings totaling 7.83 uh, trillion naira is uh, expected to be gotten via borrowing privatization proceeds of uh, uh, 298.49 billion naira and uh, multilateral and bilateral loans of uh, 1.05 trillion. These are just uh, the, the deficit of uh, the budget. Uh, are you worried that uh, this excessive borrowing by successive uh, governments might affect uh, whatever uh, fortunes or goodwill or progress in the agricultural sector? Or do you think the borrowings will rather help the agricultural sector? For borrowing, it depends on what you do with the money. If you borrow money to, to invest in production, you will get more output, and then servicing the, the, the borrowing becomes much easier. But if you borrow and then put it into administration, you are creating a lacuna because then it becomes a dead capital. You have to keep borrowing to service it, or you have to tax people more to service it. So um, if, if it is capital borrowing, borrowing to invest in infrastructure that should pay for themselves. Yes, that's fine. As a matter of fact, uh, in terms of uh, ratio of our borrowing to GDP, we are still quite healthy, I must tell you. We are still relatively uh, uh, fortunate to to be among the few countries that our, our ratio of borrowing to GDP is still quite low. But the big question is what are we borrowing to do? Are we borrowing to pistolaries? Are we borrowing to bid roads? 
that will reduce the cost of doing business or borrowing to uh, invest in infrastructure that can pay for itself and begin to create uh, more revenue for us or are we borrowing uh, to pay salaries? If we are borrowing to build infrastructure, yes, by all means, we should borrow because this infrastructure must be built. We can't run away from it. Uh, our roads are bad. <laughs> our airports, where we have good airports, they are not well maintained. But if these infrastructures improve, the cost of doing business will become lower. And of course, we will make more, more money as a country. And then we can then afford to pay. But if you are borrowing to, to pay salaries, which is what I, I think is absurd, because if you borrow to pay salaries, then what happens next? We don't happen next month and so on. So for me, it's not an issue of should we borrow? We don't have a choice. But the biggest question is what are we borrowing to do? All right. Okay, uh, let's look at the organization now, uh, how well it has done over the years and uh, uh, what are the immediate goals now? And uh, uh, what would you say has been uh, the highlight of uh, 2023 as we reach the business end of this year? What would you say will be the highlight of your, uh, your organization for 2023 and uh, what you look forward to uh, come 2024? 2023 has been eventful for us. Uh, we have laid foundations uh, over the past 10 years for what is happening now. Um, we are set to hit the, to get the market. Uh, we have built a database of over 3 million farmers that we are empowering now, spread across 24 states. Uh, we, we are with the new administration coming on board now, and the president uh, seemed to be taking agriculture very seriously. So we are quite bullish now that in 2024, uh, we intend to grow our farmers network from the current 3 million farmers to 5 million farmers. Uh, we intend to increase our, our farming ecosystem from 13 cash crops to 26 cash crops uh, in 2024. And we intend to formally now launch our export program. We have always focused over the years on local production but um, with the Naira ratio to dollar properly price now, Naira is relatively floating the open, with open market forces. It makes sense to now begin to look at export seriously. Uh, but the cost of export from Nigeria is very expensive, uh, especially for uh, agro produce. We do not have the infrastructure to support agricultural produce. So we're partnering with some companies to build agricultural processing centers within the agricultural processing zones so that we can, for example, fly Accra to London in six hours, fly vegetable to London in six hours. We can fly mango juice uh, to London as against fly mango to, to London. So we, we are seriously looking at um, as portable produce now because it makes sense to end dollar now if dollar is exchanging at the 1,200 now. Okay. Uh, on the final note, in terms of uh, uh, giving back to the society, let's look at uh, uh, institutions, agricultural institutions in the country. Do you think uh, uh, they've gotten enough funding uh, in order for them to do more research and uh, for them to get better solutions so, to some uh, you know, perennial uh, issues or diseases affecting crops, uh, maize and uh, cereals in the country? Do you think... Uh, Agricultural institutions have gotten enough support thus far. No, they are not. No, they are not. They are, our, our, our research centers are not well funded. Uh, I was in in uh, a research institute in Badon that okay. is as old as IITA, and, and what I saw, I wasn't impressed. We we still we are, are, it's the poor view of the government, but the private sector can partner with some of the research institute uh, yeah. and invest some. Uh, some co do some co research work which can improve on their businesses. So I, I think we need to look at our agricultural sector more critically, and then um, our, our research institute need to be properly funded. But also the the managers of this research institute need to think outside the box. They they need to begin to run the institute as a business, not uh, waiting for government subvention for everything. All right. Uh, uh, finally, what would be your advice uh, to just recently, we had the uh, confidence, uh, economic uh, confidential report on the internally generated revenues of states across Nigeria. And uh, Lagos 
uh, by far top the list uh, with 650 billion naira in IGR. For you, how how can states? Uh, because we have we had three main states. Uh, we had the uh, Casino State, uh, which is the former. Uh, president's uh, state, we had uh, the current uh, Senate president's state, uh, Akwa Ibom, and a uh, Biosa state, uh, uh, three states who could not measure maximum 10% uh, IGR. Uh, what would be your advice to them in order for them to embrace agriculture as a way of raising their IGR? Interestingly, the, the three states you've mentioned uh, are heavily agri-dependent states, and the potential of agriculture is huge. I think Casina, for example, um, we do have some network of farmers in Casina State. You'll be amazed at the dams in Casina. You'll be amazed at the irrigation potential of Casina. Mm. Casina can farm eight different products all year wow. round. Wow. Trust me. Um, but you just need a, a clear-headed government, a clear Clearly, governor who can take this seriously and just move away from, from rhetorics and take agriculture head on. 27%, 27 states in Nigeria can live on their agricultural potential. That I, I can show all the data. But the state had to to take agriculture as a business. It is not a joke. It is not, um, it is not a guesswork. It's, it had to be done as a business. And when they do, the IGR will begin to increase. All right. Uh, just uh, your last take on Niger State, specifically where the governor, Mohamed Bago, is specifically... Niger State. Yes, Niger State. Uh, Niger State is... That's the Ni state that says... The Niger, Niger State, Niger state, Niger yeah. state has the potential to be the food basket of Nigeria. Wow. In terms of land mass, the entire five eastern states can fit into Niger State, in terms of land mass. Okay. And this is flat bed land. That you just just imagine what you can do with that. You, I have driven four hours in Niger State without seeing a single house. I did. Now, so the land is there. It's a massive land infrastructure that is lying idle, doing nothing. They don't seem to know what to do with it. So imagine a state like Lagos, therefore, invest in Niger State, take up a hundred thousand hectares of land plant rice there, and then take it down to Lagos, process them in Lagos, and feed Lagosians. So there's a huge potential. All right. Uh, so what will be your last words as we wrap up our, our midday discourse uh, this afternoon? It's been really amazing uh, talking with you and uh, getting a very big insight on the potentials and uh, what uh, you're doing to help Nigeria out of uh, the woods. Uh, what will be your last words uh, to uh, the uh, government of the day? At the federal level, I think the, the, the government should really convene a, an agricultural summit where the government should present the plan of what they intend to do within the full security, full emergency uh, that the president has declared, and then mobilize the states to follow suit and then really take agriculture seriously. If they do, I think the international community will follow suit and Nigeria cannot only feed Nigeria, I think Nigeria can feed Africa. All right, uh, we've been talking with the Vice President Africa Operations of Maize Trading Limited, one of the leading uh, companies in Nigeria and Africa as regards agriculture. And we've been talking about tackling Nigeria's inflation via agriculture. And that's how we're going to call it a wrap on today's edition of the program Midday Discourse. My name is Anthony Momodi saying thank you for joining me. And I hope uh, you've gotten one or two lessons there to pick out, uh, to add to whatever you've got in the mix to make Nigeria great again. Good afternoon. Thank you. Ed.